Hi everyone, welcome to today's kind of do a project with me kind of vlog. This is a new thing I wanted to do, just kind of walk everyone through and show you my creative process. Today's project, it was actually inspired by Miss Moon Heaven and she has this beautiful like a granny square sweater and it just looks so good and so comfy. I wanted to make a nice sweater and I am using this heart pattern. Like look how cute this is look how darn cute that is also did it in all these different colors the yarn i'm using is the wonder woolen by fleece artist it is 100 percent canadian wool but i like to dye all my colors it is one of my favorite things to do look at this color look how gorgeous this is got green yellow i've got pink two shades of pink a light pink and a dark pink and i have lots of these it's a lavender anyways today's project i want to make a granny square sweater and i'm inspired by miss moon heaven's granny square sweater pattern i'm not following hers exactly i started to follow it and then i was like i actually want to switch it out to different granny squares so thank you miss moon heaven for the inspiration and the granny square pattern i'm using it's not mine it is by jada in stitches on youtube it is the heart granny square pattern funny that this is inspired by two Jadas, go figure. I'm just sitting in bed by the way, um, but this is my pile. And these are all the colors I came up with. I am so happy with the way they came out. I think they're so beautiful. They look so good and so delicious. This looks like candy. I'm going to steam block them and then I'm gonna finish making the sweater and then I'm going to wash it. Usually I like washing my granny squares and then pinning them to block them, but I decided it would make more sense if I steamed block them and then wash the whole thing afterwards instead of having to wash it and dry it twice. It's quite like cold where I'm at, so it would take a while to dry. I use a super thick old yoga mat to block all of my projects and as you can see I just have this ruler and I'm measuring out 20 centimeters and I'm pinning the squares down according to 20 centimeters <laughs> and I'm not pinning it so far through where it's like scratching the hardwood don't worry I'm just pinning it in place nothing crazy and yeah I just repeat it for all of the squares this is a great way to do a bunch of them I've seen other people do it with like pegboards um, I should probably do that in the future, but I really don't mind doing this. It's kind of nice to get a change of scenery and work in a different room, but I just continue that for the rest of the squares. Once I have them all pinned down, I'm just hitting them with the steamer, and of course it's going to be hot. I make sure that the steam, like, it's not hot enough to, like, go through the yoga mat and get the hardwood wet. Like, please make sure you're doing it in a proper area where you're not going to ruin your mom's hardwood. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just do that. I do it a couple of times just to make sure that they're all nice and set and then I leave them overnight to like just dry and cool down. I don't take them off immediately, you don't want to do that or else you know you risk undoing all of your hard work. It is the next day and as you can see everything is a lot more square now. It just makes it you know just a little bit more refined which is really nice so it'll be easier to attach to each other. The next step is attaching all the squares together and then adding the ribbing, collars, and sleeve cuffs and then washing it and I'll be all finished. At this point I am just laying them out on my bed just to see what colors I want next to each other and I separated all of the purple ones so I could kind of use them as spacers and this is like front and back. Then I flipped it so it would make more sense when assembling it but that is what the layout looks like. Screenshot it if you would like to use this layout. It is time for me to attach all the granny squares to each other. Oh, yeah, I'm still in my pajamas in bed. But I have everything laid out here, and I started attaching these together, and then this is where the neck hole is going to be. And I decided that I'm going to move the hearts onto their side because the sleeve will fall differently, so I'll move the hearts that way. And I'm just going to show you how I'm connecting them. I believe this is like the... F I forget what it's exactly called but it's nice and flat and it's not bulky, which is better than connecting it with single crochets in my opinion. Depends what you want to get, but this is my favorite way of connecting granny squares because I think it's so seamless and I like having that nice white stripe between everything. I'm using a crochet hook that's half a size larger than what I used for these ones. And I just start with a slip knot and then I'm gonna get my two panels that I want to connect to each other and I want to connect them like this. So I'm just putting a slip knot around my hook and then I'm inserting in that corner, but I'm not inserting directly through the stitch. I'm only inserting into half of it. You know what I mean? You know how there's like two strings on each stitch? I'm only inserting it into half of it. And then I repeat the same. Oh, there's a hair. I repeat the same for the, oh Jesus, back again. 
<laughs> I repeat the same for the- oh my gosh, this hair is stuck to me. Same for this side, and I'm only inserting it into half of it. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull through like you would a slip stitch. I'm just going to move my tail out of the way. I'm continuing the same thing. So inserting my hook right through, only grabbing half of that stitch, and then doing the same for the other one, but on the inside stitch like that. Yarn over, pull through, and I want to make sure my tension's on the looser side. I don't want to pull it too tight. Then I just keep repeating this. Ooh, there we go. All the way up the side. This one is, actually doesn't take too long, which is nice. Sometimes you have to like move it because I, I kind of lose where it's from and I don't want to skip any. I want to make sure that they're all lined up and matched up. Now, as you can see, my tension kind of changed, but that's all right. Once it's washed, it should be all good. And that is how I connect them. I really like the way it looks. And then I'm just going to continue that along the sides. Instead of cutting it after every like side, I'm just going to continue it based on how I have everything laid out. And then I think I'm going to stop like right here for the neck hole. So here's what the sweater looks so far, and as you can see, I've attached all of the squares together. Well, just like halfway so far, like halfway attached. Then I'm going to flip it and then do the arms up and then I'll start working on the ribbing. I decided to leave the neck hole like this because I tried it on and the neck hole was a bit too big, but this is going to be pretty cropped, so maybe I'll add a thick ribbing. Not too sure right now, so I'm just going to grab it like this. Oh, there we go. There's kind of a sweater. And then now I'm just going to do the sides up like here using the same technique. Okay, so most of it is finished. Um, well, not most of it. I mean, all of the pieces are put together and this is what it looks like so far. I am in my workout clothes. Um, it's quite big, which I kind of like. I don't know if I want to do another row of squares. I'm thinking of it. I'm not too sure yet. I think the sleeves are perfect because by the time I add the ribbing and then block it, it'll be the perfect length. But I am still debating, do I do more squares? Do I add a bunch of more squares? I'm thinking about it. Because I like it quite a bit because by the time I put the ribbing here, I plan on doing a thick ribbing so it'll sit at my waist. If I do a whole nother one, it'll be this long and the ribbing. Okay, so I think I'll stop here because if I add another row, then it'll just be too much, I think. This needs, we, this needs help. <laughs> I think this will be good though. All right, it's time to do the ribbing. This is the bottom of my sweater and I'm going to start in this corner here. I'm using a four millimeter crochet hook. So the ribbing will be four millimeters. The actual granny square itself is 4.5 and then the hook I use to connect everything is a five millimeter. So those small differences just kind of change it up a bit, I guess. I'm just going to insert my hook into this stitch. And then I'm going to chain 10. One, two, three, four, five. Once I get to the 10th one, I'm going to chain one more and then I'm going to single crochet back down into those 10 stitches. Once we have our 10, I'm going to slip stitch into the next two stitches on our granny square. And then I'm gonna flip it around and then I'm gonna start single crocheting into the back loops only. So we'll start in this one. All right, now I'm gonna flip it around. I'm gonna chain one and then I'm going to single crochet back down into the back loops only. Slip stitching into the next two stitches. Then I'm just going to continue this whole thing until I get all around the sweater. And at first it seems like it's gonna take a long time, but it really doesn't take that long. Here is a mini update. I am on the couch at my boyfriend's house and I'm just working on it, as you can see, you know, just, just crocheting away. He's playing God of War. 
which actually is like pretty entertaining to watch usually i don't like watching video games but that one's pretty entertaining it's got a good story but yeah after i finished the bottom i started on the sleeves and instead of slip stitching the next two stitches on the granny square i ended up slip stitching i think like four actually because i wanted them really tight totally up to you to do what you want now that i'm back home and it's daytime i thought it would be a good opportunity to show you how the sleeves and the bottom hem turned out or bottom ribbing is what i mean um i'm so happy with that i love the way crocheted hemming comes out it's like nice and thick and it's nice and stretchy here is how the sleeves look i think they're the right size or at least when i tried it on it was the right size I hope they don't stretch over time, but I think they should be fine. Any smaller than that, and I'm worried this would be stretched too much, but anyways, I think it looks pretty good. I need to do is add a top like ribbing for the neck hole, and then I will be ready to wash this guy, which is so exciting, because look how beautiful she is right now. Okay, so this is the sweater pretty much all finished. Um, it feels kind of wonky and just like not very resolved. So I'm going to wash it and block it and that should resolve pretty much all the issues of it kind of being like a little too tight around here and a little bunched up around here. But otherwise, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. This is the front, the back. I washed this and then I let it dry on like a drying rack just for a bit just so it wasn't like soaking wet when I pin it down because I don't want it to be soaking wet when I do that and then literally just pinned it down in the areas I thought it would I just like spread it out put a bunch of pins in it and then I left it overnight and then I flipped it over and pinned the other side and then left it during the day and by the nighttime it was fully dry hello hello okay so I have completed the sweater. It took a while to dry. That's just part of winter, I guess. Usually I like putting things outside for them to dry, but we don't have that luxury right now because it's freezing cold, but it's so good. Oh my gosh. Okay, time to try on. Okay, Um. let's see the back. Oh, the back isn't long enough. It's not long enough, but no, it is long enough once I added the ribbing kind of cinched everything in. I asked on TikTok if I should add another row of hearts and then do the ribbing, but it would have been too long. The hearts are pretty big and people are like, do half size hearts. And I'm like, okay, I don't even, guys, I can't do this. Um, I'm really happy with it right now. It is actually so cute. It is so cute. I really popped off with this. Let me move my hair. Wow, and it's so thick because it is 100% wool. Wow, amazing. Yeah, it fits perfectly. I don't know, maybe I will add another row. Do I want it oversized, oversized, or am I satisfied with this? I can always make another one. Anyways, I am so happy with that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for tagging along for this vlog style kind of episode um so cute it's like the hearts okay if you want me to do more videos like this in the future let me know i had a really fun time kind of filming my process and i can't believe i'm finally finished this sweater it only took like i don't know nine months from start to finish cute 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 anyways i hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day i will see you in the next video goodbye